are highly organized. There is a perfect hierarchical organizational setup like formal organizations and some of them have reached a level in technical capabilities at par with those of developed nations. They are targeting large financial organizations, defense and nuclear establishments and they are also into online drug trading. The role of all the people in the hierarchy remain changing and it is based on the opportunity. If a hacker who have hacked sensitive data from an organization may use it for financially exploiting the organization himself. In case the hacker himself have the technical expertise for it, he'll do it himself. Otherwise, he may find a buyer who is interested in that data and have a technical expertise. There are some cyber criminals who offers on-demand services. The person, organization or a country may contact these cyber criminals for hacking an organization to gain access to some sensitive data or create massive denial of service attack on their competitors. Based on the demand of the customer, the hackers write malwares, viruses, etc. to suit their requirements. Let us now discuss the reasons for commission of cyber crimes. There are many reasons which act as a catalyst in the growth of cyber crime. Some of the prominent reasons are money. People are motivated towards committing cyber crime is to make quick and easy money. The second reason could be revenge. Some people try to take revenge with other persons, organization, society, caste or religion by defaming its reputation or bringing economical or physical loss. This comes under the category of cyber terrorism. Fun. The amateur do cyber crime for fun. They just want to test the latest tool they have encountered. Another reason could be recognition. It is considered to be a pride if someone hack a highly secure networks like different sites or networks. Anonymity. Many times the anonymity that a cyberspace provides motivates the person to commit cyber crime as it is much easy to commit a cyber crime over cyberspace and remain anonymous as compared to real world. Cyber espionage. At times, the government itself is involved in a cyber trespassing to keep eye on other person, network or country. The reason could be politically, economically or socially motivated. Now we will discuss challenges of cyber crime. The first challenge is domestic and international law enforcement. A hostile party using an internet connected computer thousands of miles away can attack internet connected computers in any country as easily as if he were next door. It is often difficult to identify the criminal behind such an attack and even when a criminal is identified, criminal prosecution across international boundaries is problematic. Second challenge is lack of infrastructure. Proper monitoring and arrest calls for sophisticated state-of-the-art information and communication technology devices. The third challenge is lack of national functional databases. National database could serve as a means of tracking down the criminals of these heinous acts by checking into past individual records and tracking their movements. Prolification of cyber cafes. As a means of making ends meet, many entrepreneurs have taken to establishment of cyber cafes that serve as blissful heavens for the syndicates to practice their acts through night browsing services they provide to prospective customers without being guided or monitored. Porous nature of the internet. The internet is free for all with no central control, hence the state of anarchy presently experienced. Now we will discuss the effects of cyber crime. The first effect is financial loss. Cyber criminals are like terrorists or metal thieves in that their activities impose disproportionate cost to society and individuals. Loss of reputation. Most companies that have been defrauded or reported to have been faced with cyber criminal activities complains of clients losing faith in them. Reduced productivity. 
This is due to awareness and more concentration being focused on preventing cyber crime and not on productivity. Now we will discuss various solutions to cyber crime. The first solution is education. Cyber crime is difficult to prove as it lacks the traditional paper audit trail which requires the knowledge of specialists in computer technology and internet protocols. Hence, we need to educate citizens that if they are going to use the internet, they need to continuously maintain and update the security of their system. We also need to educate corporations and organizations in the best practice of effective security management. For example, some large organizations now have a policy that all systems in their purview must meet strict security guidelines. Automated updates are sent to all computers and servers on the internal network and no new system is allowed online until it confirms to the security policy. Next solution is establishment of programs and IT forums for youths. Since the level of unemployment in the country has contributed significantly to the spate of e-crime, the government should create employments for these youths and set up IT laboratories or forums where these youths could come together and display their skills. This can be used meaningfully towards 